This is our day 11 on Selenium Java Cucumber CI course. And today we will see how you can run your test again and again, repeated in a repeated fashion. And then we will see how we can run test cases with different parameters and values. That means the same test case, but with different values we'll go one by one so first we will check how we can run a test case repeatedly okay so our main project is this one in the selenium practice i'm making a new class And we'll give the name of the class as uh, invocation demo. Okay. And let's say our test case is this test public void check something. Okay. And here you are doing something. So here, probably let's say you're uh, printing high. Okay. Done. At the rate test, we have to import the test ng1. Okay. And uh, let's run this to check it's working or not. Okay. This is working. It is printing high here. So it's working. But how I can run the same test case again and again, you can simply use invocation count. So there is a parameter called invocation count and you can set up it is equals to three. Let's say if I set up the invocation count as three, now the same test case will get executed three times so i am running this sometimes it is required in real project scenario sometimes let's say we want a test case to be run three times then you will be using this okay let's take a real example so for example let's say i want to check um simple example we'll automate something new today so let's say uh, there is a website which calculates simple interest simple interest i'm just searching simple interest calculate so there is a calculate stuff.com this particular website is there where you can put principal interest rate and term and once you click on the calculate it calculates the simple interest so here if i search and I'll put 4000 is the principal interest rate is five term is let's say uh, four years so simple interest formula is p into r into t divided by 100 so once i click on the calculate here it will say okay your principal worth this and your interest will be calculated 800 so based on the formula it has come okay so maybe it is required that you want to test it again and again okay so you want to test it you know it's a kind of reliability testing that whenever you put uh, the amount in again and again the result should be same it happens it kind of test this kind of test can come so for that let's set up everything so we will be having one before class where we will say let's say public void setup browser okay and inside this we will set up our browser code so I'm just copying a code from another class. This one we want actually. So I will copy this. 
where we have driver is equals to null and before class code is this okay now we will write the code for uh, opening a particular browser so sorry website so we will write it here driver dot find element sorry driver dot get driver dot get that will open a particular website done and once you open this website what we want to do we want to put principal rate and uh, town so we have to inspect this obviously so let's inspect it so inspect element and we are getting that its name is principal okay there is id also principal so you can use either id or name so let's use today name also because this locator we never use so name is also a locator uh, which you can use so let's write it like driver dot find element by dot name if it is unique you have to check that principal as a name should not come multiple time in that page so i'm able to see that principal has come two times one when it is written in a script so that is fine in a script it is fine but as an element name it has come only once here i'm able to see that it has come only once here great so we can use it name is equals to principal okay by name and you want to first clear it out because there are default values so for example if i refresh it see there that whenever you refresh it the default value is set as ten thousand. we want to clear it out so we'll say clear and after that we will put some values so we will say dot send keys let's say we will send four thousand and then after that what we want to do we want to put the interest rate let's say so interest rate has name is equals to interest rate so that will be copied so i'm copying this putting it here and uh, instead of principal now it will be interest rate okay and then we want to put the town so i'm inspecting the town now and town so there is a name town you can use id also so let's use id this time so we will write just a minute an interest rate is let's say five percent and instead of by dot name we are doing by dot id fine and here also by dot id okay and what is that id the id is town t-e-r-m and we want to our term is let's say eight years fine so answer should be four thousand so 40 into five is 200 so 1600 should come actually so let's check 4005 and eight so 4000 if it is for five percent interest rate for eight years the answer is 1600 here okay and let's assume that we want to check this also as an assertion so today we will understand about a bit about assertion also so we want to check this particular value should always be 1600 dollar in this in this way 
So let's capture this also. So I'm capturing this. Inspected it. And it's saying that it is div class call x as four. So it's not making any sense actually, because this class name call x as four is not a kind of you know standard one. There is no ID, there is no name. So you have to formulate on your own then how we can capture this particular uh, value. Okay. So you have to think about how you can check it. Okay. So there are multiple ways. Um, I'll tell you what you can do and concentrate on what we are doing today. Okay. So if you observe that there is a div class row. Okay. And uh, then there is a div again at a child level which captures the text see here there is an interest text if i hover over this child element it is showing me then inside that there is a span tag then inside that there is another span tag then there is this text interest somewhere after the span the bigger span is closed now then div is closed now there is another div and it is saying 1600 dollar perfect okay so how to check it and then how many rows are there see this is div row and then there is first row but is there any uh, unique thing from where i can start i can start with this if you see here so I'm going to the, so whenever you think that you are not able to find a particular element, go to the parent one by one. Okay, okay, going to the parent, parent, parent. Here is a unique thing. Div ID is equals to result. Class is equals to gray box, something like that. It looks promising that, okay, there is something, a block that has the ID as result where all the results are coming. So you can use it, but then you have to go down, down, down and check how many rows are there. So is it a good idea that uh, we will have some kind of, so div class is equals to row is multiple times. This is also div class is equals to row. This is also div class is equals to row. This is also div class is equals to row. So it's difficult to get them. Hmm. But I have one idea. I have one very interesting thing to show you that is there any way that we can find out that uh, where is this interest as a text written inside a span and then we will find out its parent and then again a parent and then again a parent and then if you see here, the whole row is highlighted and then we will go to the child. Okay, so what I'm saying is, let's understand. I'll make a diagram. I'm saying that there is parent one. Okay, it has, let's say child one. There is another child two, child two. So I'll give a proper name. This child one is actually from the parent one. This child two is from parent one. Okay. And this is also from parent one. And then parent is closed. So we'll write P2 here. These may have again their own child. So here it will come as so it will come as let's say child okay, let me make it c3 first c3 hmm. now there may be another let's say d d1 underscore c1 under so i i'll write simply c1 only so that it will be clear because c1 is already has a parent p1 right so there may be multiple child here so i'm writing 
d2 underscore c1 so d2 is has the parent c1 something like that and let's say c2 has only one child let's say the name is d3 okay and this particular has again a child called d4 underscore c3 it's very simple i have put it in a proper hierarchy that there is let's say parent okay and this uh, parent is closed now let me write it properly okay so p1 started here p1 end here p1 has a child c1 it has three child c1 c2 c3 that's why they are in the same level so we'll say c1 c2 c3 are the siblings right c1 has again two child d1 and d2 and uh, that's fine c2 has one child d3 let me make more childs for this d5 underscore c3 d6 underscore c3 so hierarchy is very simple like it's like our family right where you may have your uncles and your uncle may have again their uncles right in, in the grandparent level grandfather level they may have their own brothers right and there then there are childs from them okay so what i'm saying is even i can anytime backtrack so xpath is very good tool if i am at any point let's say i am at this level okay and i want to capture this d2 c1 so what i will write slash slash p1 so you have to identify i am not writing every it's not a tag p1 means you identify this parent through some you know unique identification so let's say i have identified parent then i can write slash slash let's say i am going through this hierarchy that okay and my element is let's say this one so now there is a magic that if you are able to identify this but with this help you want to go and you want to identify this it's possible so what i'm saying is there is this particular child and you want to identify this it's possible how see here i'll put slash slash dot 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 means go back it's a command line you know in, in command line when you write cd dot dot what happens it goes back to the previous directory the parent directory actually right in the same way xpath also works so when i write dot dot with this so i am up till this i have reached so i am here i can do dot dot so this will reach here and then i can again say dot dot it's possible so it will reach here right and then you can say slash anywhere if you are able to identify you want to go to this it's possible right wherever now we are again at the same point like where we started so it's a, just a random example i'll show you the real example by doing this so what i'm saying is let's say we will identify where is interest and then we will go back to identify that there is a row right this particular row go till this and then come back and find out a uh, second number div okay why i'm doing this because we don't know on which row this will come that's why we are identifying this row based on the span based on the span text so let's try whether that is possible or not let's try this i'm opening this in chrome actually okay so that it will be clear so what i'm saying here is let me inspect it again and let me put it properly here so what i am saying is let me little bit make it smaller okay 
so let's inspect this 8000 again and uh, let's check sorry sorry interest interest so we this interest is here okay and uh, can we find any span based on the text yes so search it uh, x path for span containing text I'm such I know the answer but I I am showing you that if any point of time if you stuck don't worry there are a lot of people who has similar kind of problem they are there to help you don't worry so this is particular way to find a span which has you know exact text this one so if I copy this and uh, control f control v so there is no edit student i'll make it interest so i n t e r e s t so it is having only one so if you see here we are able to capture one span which has text as interest and now observe what i'm doing i'm writing slash slash dot dot so do, do you observe that okay let me delete again so as of now our pointer is at this span our pointer is showing us in this span okay now when i do slash slash dot dot it has reached to the upside okay and if i do slash slash dot dot again it is going up right or so this is one way we will talk about some other ways also so now i find i am at a particular row now now i can do slash slash div two can i do that yes see here when I say I said div two because this particular row has two div one div tag second div tag and second div tag has what we want the whatever is the result of that interest so this is our expression so let's let me uh, 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 let me go back and we will simply write string result is equals to driver dot find element by dot x path and x path expression is this uh, then we can write just a minute dot we get text so we want that text and we want to print it as of now we will print it and then we will do assertion also so this result okay we will make it actual result this is actual result okay let's print it and okay we did not click on the calculate button just a minute okay so we have to click on the calculate button this button let's inspect it inspecting it and it has the name as commit so i'm using that one only so we'll write driver dot find element by dot name commit dot click and once we will click it let's wait for four seconds fine and then we will have the results so this is very simple code i am deleting this high part and in fact this invocation count we will make it one we want to run it one time only so what we are going to do we once we will open the browser we want to open this website we want to clear out the principal text box then we want to send 4000 as a principal amount and interest amount and then term value term is number of years 
and then clicking on that button, waiting for it to that, so that result will come. We'll get the text of that result and printing it. Okay, let's run it. It is opening that, putting 4,005 and eight and 1,600 it is showing, but did we capture it? Yes, here it is coming. So this is our actual result, which we have printed. You may have your own expected result. So our expected result is, you may be knowing already, right? So let's say this is our expected also. So this is my expected result, and then we will match it. So we can write assert dot assert true and you can say my actual result sorry actual result dot um equals expected result done so this will check whether actual result is equal to the expected result and this particular statement is returning true or not if it return true your test case is passed if it will not return true then your test case the assertion will get exception it's like this so let's run this program again great so running done okay test case passed one passed one passed fine but if i do it invocation count is equals to let's say two okay so now we will run this let's observe what will happen so this is opening the browser and uh, putting four thousand five and eight asserting it and then again opening again putting 4005 and 8 so the same test case is executed twice same test case is executed twice that's why it has printed two times that's why the same test case check something which we have written is executed twice and if you see in the test ng result it will say that there was check something first time so there are two times it has to execute there is first pass and there is a second pass which was executed all are green means both test case got passed okay so this is like you can put invocation count is equals to whatever number of times you want to execute <clears throat> now the real problem is let's say i want to check my test case multiple times that's fine but i want to pass different values i don't want to pass every time 4005 and 8 i want to pass different values so that's why data provider is important okay so our next agenda is to see the data provider so i'm making a new class and here We'll make a new test ng class. Okay. And here we'll give a name, let's say data provider demo. Okay. I don't so data provider is the annotation, but I'm not clicking on it because I want to show you it in a very raw way that how you can write your own code. So this is our test case. Let me give the name of the test case is, um, you can give a particular name. So I'm giving name verify interest rate, let's say. And I'll show you a very simple example first okay 
Okay, I have not written anything. So data provided is an annotation. That means you can write it here, data provided, at the rate data provider. And you can write public void, and then there will be a function name, right? So I'm writing, let's say, um, data for test, okay? You can give any name. There is no standard rule, what should be the name of the data provider function okay now whenever you have data provider you cannot put it void okay because data provider means this particular function is going to return some values which will be used in a test is it clear what i'm saying is here you have to write a function in a way that it will return something which will be captured at the test level so here actually you have to write it let's say object so data provider returns object only okay soon it will be clear don't worry about it so you have to create object array so i'm creating object let's say a is equals to and i'm directly creating it like let's say it has one value um Nitesh, and second value let's say testology done and then we will return it so return a okay now what this will do is whenever you will use data for test function as a data provider you will get two values nitesh and testology it's like this so it will it will return a whole object array it's like this how to use this okay you can write here at the test level you have to say who is your data provider so you can say my data provider is this particular function so my data provider is this but once you will write it it won't make any sense if you will catch you have to take it as a parameter so here you have to write string uh, value anything you can write i'm just giving a value as a name you can give any name it's a local param it's a local um, parameter right so what we say is a formal parameters right so value now if i will print the value so let's say my test case is this that i want to print just value let's run this so that it will be clear what it is doing mm -hmm. so if you observe in the output window what happened this time is Nitesh and testology is printed one by one and there are two test case run right it is showing me test run two why let's understand this part now okay so let's understand data provider again what we are doing in the data provider is we are creating one object array. So what is object first of all? What is object, right? So if you see here, class object is the root of the class hierarchy. Every class has object as a super class. All objects including arrays implement the method of this class. So generally, when you are using any class, right? There is a by default object. I am not going into technical detail of that as of now, but let's understand that any object array can have, uh, you can put anything like string, integer, anything you can put. So when you create object array, there is a freedom that you can put, you can mix um you can mix the data type first thing and that data type will become automatically the object data type 
right object itself a kind of it it provides uh, a data type okay so here what we are saying is we are creating an array if you see here we created one uh, array and then we returned it this line can be written in other ways also let me write it maybe for some of you if you are not comfortable with this i'll write the exact simple code i should write this also it's like new object and then saying that the size right so but it's not good to put the size it's not good to put size but let me put it here four okay is it possible yes and then i can say a of zero is equals to check one a of a of one is e sorry a of one is equals to testology dot n and then a of two is equals to something let's say india and then saying a of three is equals to something let's say us done so there is this way also i have written a shortcut like i didn't declare the size and i said okay there is in this array there are two values right you can do it in this way also and return a so we declared one object array and we said that a of zero is this a of one is this okay and then re we return the whole array okay what will happen these will so this case will start running first then it will check okay there is a data provider fine it will go here what is the data provider name data for test so it will find out where is the data provider whose name is data for test okay it will come here then it will check okay there is a object so this a will come one by one so there is an object array but this a first a0 will be assigned to this then a1 then a2 then a3 so this test case will run four times this particular test is going to be run four times let's see and i can put a debug point so that it will be clear for you so i'm putting a debug point here let me debug as test ng test okay so if you observe here i am putting how i am putting hover here so see here this test case is executing and the value is showing me check one which is a0 okay and if i continue next time it is you know coming back now the check this value is testology in next time the value is india next time the value is us and done test case is done so this is how you can pass the value to your test case okay now if you want if i want to pass two dimensional object array that is also possible so let me copy the whole and i will show you another example so my test second test case name is uh, verify i can give any name as of now it's just random name verify result and uh, data for test case 2 and this time we'll create two dimensional object array so we can give the name as this let me change the name so that so i'm giving data the name itself is let's say data and the size of my data is it's an array right so two by three two by three means two rows and uh, three columns so here we will write data data of uh, zero zero right or i'm doing a little bit shortcut 
understand it guys it's not a big deal 5000 comma second value is 5 years comma uh, 5% for 10 years let's say something like that so is it possible no it's saying it's not it's showing me error let me first do that i was thinking this is possible okay mm, what what mistake i'm doing so what is the error here array constant cannot be used in initializer oh so you have to actually give here that where you are putting the values so this cannot be blank i was thinking why not put the you know first row value directly like this so i have to put the values properly so what i want to achieve is i want to show you that i want to achieve my data will be first row is 5000 principal amount for um 5 percent with 10 years my second set of data i want to put is 6000 for uh, um, 10 percent with uh, three years my third set of data i want to put as uh, 9000 for 10 years for 10 uh, whatever is like whatever data we want to pass so i my objective is this actually that we want to every time pass you know set of data first set of data second set of data third set of data right so what they are saying is so this is possible if i write it directly it will be very easy like uh, in this in this way if i write it will be very easy so let me hard code it and then i will show you that one by one also you can do it so how we can write it i'm just thinking we can write it like this that object is equals to new object and uh, i can say two by three okay two by three means two rows three columns it's same as two dimensional array and then i can say data is equals to okay first row second row and this okay third row and then colon but here that is again a set of values so this is first row second row and third row and here then i can put the values so i'll put 5000 5 comma 10 okay but that will be here comma it's just a minute double quote double quote double quote fine first set of values second set of values is this the only thing is you have to put in double quote all values are going as a string there is a way to pass the integer also i'll show that one also don't worry and third set of values this oh we have two rows and three columns so let me delete this we have two rows and three columns why we are making a third row okay so this is showing me error it's saying that okay this is first row okay comma is not required and this is started here and it should work as a first row then comma then this should work as a second row and then uh, semicolon so what is the error here syntax error on token expression expected in state okay so in this way it is not capturing but but i know i'll show you one example by to directly put it to directly put the values okay let me check it quickly no no
that's fine so we'll do it one by one as of now so we'll say data of zero zero is five thousand something like this so we'll say data of zero zero is five thousand let me delete everything five thousand so we'll just copy paste okay so the first set of data is this and data of zero one data of zero two and we will say it okay data of zero zero is this data of zero one is five and this is 10. Second set of data is data of, so it's a second row. So it all will be one, one, zero, one, 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 two. And the values are 6,000 with 10 year, 10% uh, and for three years done so this is how we created the whole two-dimensional array correct two-dimensional object array returned it and because now it will go like a row by row so this whole thing you have to capture in one shot and then you have to capture the second row so you have when you are using where is our test case this one so our data provider for this test case is different. So here you have to capture three values then. Value one, comma, string, value two, comma, string, value three. And let's print it. So we'll print, let's say value one plus, value two plus value three plus means here is the string so it will just do a string concatenation okay let me run this let me disable this test case we don't want to execute this one so we'll say enabled is equals to false so that this test case will not execute we want to execute our second set of test cases let me delete all this thing so that it will be clear now the problem is you have to return two dimension array right so you have to write it like this public object two times rectangular bracket done so let's concentrate on this part only now if i run this program if you observe See here, the first set of data, 5,000, 5, and 10. Second set of data, 6,000, 10, and 3, I'm able to capture. That means I can use it in a real test case. How to use it? So our test case for checking this, I'm copying this part where we clicked, assert, everything, copying this, putting it in a real test case. So I'm deleting this part and let me copy the before class and all okay so let's concentrate on this part only where we are opening this and uh, okay now instead of putting principal we'll put value one okay instead of putting this we'll put value 2 okay and instead of putting 8 we are not hard coding it now we'll put it value 3 okay and uh, commit will be clicked as of now let's say I, i'll not capture this i'll not assert it we will do this part also First, we will check whether this data passing is happening or not. So this time, all the data will come from here. We are not hard coding it in the code, right? So let's run this. I'm running this program. Let's observe what will happen. 
So this is uh, yes, first time see here, second time it has put six thousand. So two times it got executed. It was very fast. Let me put some kind of thread dot sleep so that you will get to know that it is executed twice. So that you will get to know that it is executed twice. So here I am putting thread dot sleep for five seconds. Okay, let's run it again. Observe what is happening. It is opening 5510 it has put then uh, it will refresh the page 6103 it is putting and clicking perfect it's working fine but then expected result is changing both the time so what we can do now you have to think logically it's very simple so what we will do instead of having three rows three columns We'll make it four columns and we will pass the expected result also in data zero three we'll pass the expected result also we'll pass let's say i'm randomly passing uh, some value so let's see what is the format format is uh, dollar and then some value okay so let me put it here so this test case will get failed don't worry and 6001 we will pass a right one i want to show both that one is passed one is failed and here will come three and let's calculate uh, 6000 so the answer will be 16 to 10 600 into three so 1800 dollar will come actually so i'm putting 1800 dollar i'll make it 1800 okay now it's perfectly fine what we did is we are passing the expected result also so we will capture here comma a string expected you can give any name i'm giving a meaningful name only result okay so one by one expected result will also come and in the fourth parameter so instead so now i am deleting this and it will be very interesting to see let me delete this one this time expected result will not be hard coded here so nothing is hard coded now now once we will get the actual result from this part okay then uh, let's say we are printing actual result that is fine then we want to check the actual result which is coming from the web page is matching with this expected result which we already know right in the real world it happens right you have set of data and you know what is your expected result right and this is actual result which will come so we are matching both are working fine or not let's run it and observe what is happening see here 5000 so the answer is 2500 so this good got failed because we were we were checking with some other value 1800 dollar perfect so second test case will get passed now i want to show you how to see the result okay see here it is showing me in the command prompt that there were two test cases one pass one fail but if you want to see the real results see here it is showing us so it's saying your passed one was this where you pass these four values that one is passed but this particular got failed where you were saying 5000 is the first parameter, second is 5, third is 10, and your expected was this. This got failed. You want to see the real result in a good way? You can go to your test ng icon here. Here it will be a very good result. Here it is saying me that uh, somewhere 
here if you see this is getting blue color in some cases it will get the red color right here it is saying me green this one is green where i am passing 6010 and 3 with 1800 dollar this is green this is getting me fail where it is saying that you pass this kind of value okay so this is all about uh, how you can pass the data how you can use data provider